I need to shoot a video today. I'm, I'm trying to get back to my regular quota of videos, which is typically three or four videos a week, depending on whether or not you count the live show. So I'd like to get something useful done, but it can't be too crazy involved or anything like that, because I've got other stuff to work on. I've got 10th gen Intel stuff. I've got some new AMD CPUs that have arrived that I need to start testing. This next week is gonna be pretty busy with that kind of thing. I wanna invest some time out here in the garage. It's been kind of a dumping ground for stuff since we had the whole remodel done. But maybe, maybe if I just kind of close my eyes and meditate for a moment, a good project will come to me. I hear my daughter out in the other room. That's okay, ignore that. I hear you guys saying, Paul, you should clean stuff up, do some cleaning. I, it's too much, too much. I said a manageable project. Wait though, I think I, I think I hear something. I think I hear something right over here. Now what is this? What is that horrendous sound? Oh yeah, let's fix this. Excellent. The Dark Core RGB Pro is a premium wireless gaming mouse from Corsair with a long list of features like an 18,000 DPI low power PixArt optical sensor for maximum precision with minimal power usage, attractive 9 zone dynamic RGB backlighting, and a comfortable contoured shape with two interchangeable side grips included. Connect wirelessly via Corsair's sub 1 millisecond slipstream technology, via Bluetooth for convenience on the go, or wired via USB C. Durable arm round switches, up to 50 hours of battery life, 8 fully programmable buttons, and more, so click the sponsor link in the description for details. So this slim mini ITX case is the Dr. Zaber Sentry, and I built this system in it back in November and December of 2019. The goal is for this to be my home surveillance PC, and I wanted to do a DIY home surveillance solution. In the first video, I made a bunch of mistakes. I followed up in the second video and tried to correct my mistakes. I also made additional mistakes, and the plan was to come back to it to do a little bit further analysis of some of the software solutions I was using, as well as try to get a better handle on these smart PoE uh, IP cameras that are really cool and really functional and can offload a lot of the work from a computer that you might be using as a central hub uh, so that the camera does it itself. Long story short though, I haven't done any of that. It is now May 2020. Uh, fortunately, this system has been up and running. I've just been using the Contacam software because I paid 10 bucks for it and it has been functional. I would still like to come back to the idea of setting up DIY home surveillance by building a PC to sort of handle everything, but I think I will do it once I've done a little bit more research and maybe get a little bit more hands-on experience and I just haven't been able to do any of that over the past few months because of remodel and all the other stuff that's been going on in the world. Today though, I'm gonna crack this system open and try to solve two simple problems. The first is what you hopefully heard there in the intro, which is that the cooling solution I have on here, which is a CryoRig C7, which is right up against the grill over on this side, cooling off our CPU, which is the AMD Ryzen 5 3400G. And I know Dr. Zaber and I believe CryoRig as well contacted me when I first set this up and was like, that's probably not the best cooling solution because in their tests, it has to run at a really high RPM on the fan in order to actually cool adequately. That has been absolutely true. I've come in here to film multiple times and just heard it going off over there where I have temporarily set it up and thought to myself, ah, I need to fix that. So today I'm gonna fix it. Also, I am finally gonna be integrating this four terabyte mechanical hard drive because I purchased this back in November or December. Right now it's saving all my surveillance camera footage to a 500 gig SSD. And I'm just a little bit concerned about the longevity of that 500 gig SSD since NAND flash does have a limited amount of program erase cycles and eventually we'll run through them. And this type of use case is much better suited for something like the WD Purple Drive, which is made to handle multiple video streams. It's very efficient at that and it should last much longer durability wise than the SSD. That said, let's open this up. So here's the build disassembled. Uh, I just got a couple SSDs up on the top. There is that C7 looking pretty dusty. And you can tell why this isn't a very effective solution. The uh, fins are going this way, which means it's gonna push the air one this direction, which is gonna be immediately blocked by the RAM right there. Over here, there's a little bit of space for it to escape, but just not a whole lot. The temperatures here weren't crazy or anything like that either, um, but the CPU was just getting hot enough that it was having to ramp that fan up quite a bit. Now, the thing I realized is I don't have an alternate solution for this, at least in mind right now. So I'm gonna just have to hunt down here in the garage and try to find something that can fit in here. There's a chance I might even do a mod to the side panel here if I choose something that is a little bit too big. We'll check that out in just a second. The other thing that I might do, since there is a little bit of space up here, I'm going to be mounting uh, the, the four terabyte drive up there somewhere. As I expand my camera setup though, there is that trade-off. 
is the CPU going to be doing the heavy lifting when it comes to video transcoding and stuff like that? Or are your cameras going to be doing it? With the setup I have right now, the CPU is doing the heavy lifting. And that can be desirable if the software you're using can do stuff that your intelligent security cameras can't, such as putting together a bunch of little animations of stuff that have happened over the course of the day or of the week that you can look back to quickly assess if you know anybody's been messing with your stuff wherever you have, you have your security cameras set up. To that end, if I'm gonna keep using the Contacam software, then the load's gonna be on the CPU, and Contacam recommends, I think something like two cores per camera, or two threads per camera, and this is a four core, eight thread CPU that I have in here right now. So, if I could add a graphics card to give me some video outs, something low power that can sit right up there that's also small enough that gives me enough space over here, then maybe I could also upgrade the CPU, but I may be getting too ahead of myself as it is. I need to go check out what I have here in stock and see what I'm working with today. So I hope I haven't shot myself in the foot already, but uh, I am fortunate enough that I have multiple Noctua coolers here on hand. And when it comes to air coolers, Noctua tends to make some of the best that are available. The simplest solution would be to go with this, the Noctua NHL9i, which is sort of the competitor to the Cryorig C7, or maybe the Cryorig C7 is a competitor to the NHL9i, but this one's low profile it's meant to fit in a case like this it's really quite ideal but what i have here is the intel version lga 115x is what this is compatible with and you either need to buy the am4 version or buy a different bracket to go along with this in order to be able to mount it so for now can't go with that. I do have the NHL12S. Uh, this one is AM4 compatible, so I'm gonna pop this open and check that out. And then I also have an NHU12S SE AM4, and this one also comes with an AM4 mounting bracket. So I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna check both of these out and see how far they would actually protrude outside the case, because I could pretty easily chop a hole in the side of this case, and where I'm planning to have this mounted, I actually wouldn't mind that. It would actually give me access to like clean the fan out, which I know is gonna get dusty because it's gonna be on 24 seven. But of course, then I'd have to break out the cutting tool and all that stuff. So uh, let me pop these out of the box and, and, and I'll get back to you guys. So the SE here is a tower style cooler. So obviously that's not gonna work or that's, that's not a solution that I'm going for. But again, I am for mounting bracket on here. So I gotta check that and see if it's compatible with the NHL9i. Probably not, but who knows? And I found out the answer to that one pretty quick, which is no, because uh, what you're gonna need for an AM4 mount for this CPU cooler is different brackets down here on the bottom, and those are not gonna be included with this one. I guess one thing I can do here is to remove the motherboard. It's gonna need to happen one way or the other. There. So I think I've gotten to the point in this project where I feel really silly because there's a lot of impractical stuff going on. The case, for one, is already very overpriced. I, I discussed a lot of this stuff in the video that I did back in December. But the fact is I don't have a cooler that will work here without modding the case, at least not something that I have here on hand. So that's another really silly thing. If I had the patience to wait for the AM4 bracket for the Noctua NH-L9i, then I could just install that and move on. But I do have this L12S. This L12S does have AM4 four mounts, although this is a low profile cooler and I also don't have the fan for it anymore. So I'm gonna have to use a, a standard 120 millimeter fan. It's still just a little bit too tall for this case. I can get it here and it won't conflict with the motherboard and the heat sinks or anything. So that's okay. But with the side panel on, you can just sort of see the cooler underneath there and obviously that's not going to close because the cooler is is definitely too tall for the case that means i would need to cut a larger than 120 millimeter fan sized hole here so that the side panel could go on all the way the cooler would then stick up through the hole and i would just stick a 120 millimeter fan on top and i had almost convinced myself that this was a bad idea and that i should just cut things off here and go another route but then i told myself you know what if i can find that u-channel rubber molding that Bill Owen from MNPC Tech sent me all the way back when I did the case side panel mod on the original Arctic Panther. Then perhaps I will feel like this is the way I should go. This is basically some, some rubber stuff and if you cut steel like a case side panel or something like that, you have an unfinished edge, you can just use this to sort of mask it, go along the edge. It helps give it a much nice cleaner finish look and uh, a much more intentional look than if you're just cutting steel and leaving stuff unfinished. And it also helps protect that rough edge from cutting you. But I think that means I have the ingredients and the path forward to actually accomplish my goal today or maybe tomorrow. It is already late in the afternoon. My next steps though are going to be to mount this cooler 
to the motherboard with the back plate and everything. Get all that mounted in the case so I know exactly where it's gonna be. Get my side panel here and set it on top and get measurements for where I need to cut. Cut the hole, then problem should be solved. I hope nothing goes wrong. Good thing I saved this original AM4 back plate. All right, so I have everything secured in here. There's there's no thermal paste under there yet or anything. I just wanted to get it all lined up with the motherboard mounted properly, the cooler mounted properly. And I am now very concerned about this left edge and potential clearance with where the case needs to come and kind of wrap around the corner right here and this, this corner of the cooler. Because as you can see, that's jutting out a fair bit right there. If it was maybe like, I don't know, a few millimeters or something like that to the right, then I would feel a little bit more confident. But right now, if I kind of lower the side panel down, which I would need to do in order to mar mark off where the uh, heat sink is from where I can see it through the side grill here. I can just tell that upper left corner there is going to be something that causes me to have to cut way over here and into this side, which I'd rather not do, mainly because this is a single piece, but um, if I cut a big hole out right here, it's gonna just be left with a thin strip right here kind of holding this section together. So I'm worried about the overall integrity of the case. I probably should have learned my lesson a while back about starting off a video saying like, hey, I'm gonna accomplish a simple task or something like that because I tend to end up shooting myself in the foot. But honestly, I started out on the wrong foot anyway because I really should have had a, a cooling solution in mind for this before I started building. What I did have in mind was this NHL9i, which I knew I already had, but I completely forgot that Noctua does not always include mounts for both AMD and Intel with all of their coolers, and sometimes you need to get a special kit for the AMD side of things. So at this point, I'm just gonna think about it for a while, come up with a solution, and you will find out what that solution is right now. All right, so I've had some time to think about it and I've decided to go ahead and mod the case. I have three reasons for doing so. The first, I feel a little guilty about, which is that if this goes horribly wrong, I can make a video title about this going horribly wrong and we all know how those videos tend to do on YouTube. They tend to do well. I do hope that I can do this successfully though. And the second reason is that I think even if I completely manage to destroy this piece, I can still run the system in this little setup and I can even wall mount it and everything so I can get by without a side panel and I've been known to do much worse than that in the past. And then I guess the third reason is that even if I do manage to mangle and destroy this, I can maybe DIY something to operate as a replacement side panel, but um, that's really only a figment of my imagination right now. Here's what I wanna do though. I'm gonna reinstall everything here. So I'm gonna add thermal paste to the cooler, get it mounted, get everything plugged back in, get the hard drive installed and wired properly. Then I can get as accurate a measurement as possible for the side panel and where I need to cut it. Then I can go ahead and cut it with my rotary tool. I'd like to get the hard drive mounted next, right up in this space. I'm gonna remove that SSD. So mounting it from the bottom, I'm using these little spacer screws because I would like to provide it with a little bit of padding between the hard drive and the case to dampen some vibration from the spinning mechanicalness of this hard drive. Of course, all my spacers are sort of, I thought I had these sorted, but I've only got two. I would like to use these, but I've only got two. So I'm gonna try to use these. I've been fumbling with this for like 10 or 15 minutes now. This is really difficult to mount in here with the spacers in between the screw mounting to this. I've just been fumbling with it. I've decided that I'm gonna modify these spacers. They're just a little bit too thick, uh, so I think I can snip this part off. Oh. It actually worked pretty well. I wonder where the other side went. Well, that was a lot more maddening than I would like to admit. Further proof that I should never ever start a video by saying the words like, hey, I'm just gonna do something quick and simple and easy today. But hey, hard drive's installed. Let's move on. So at this point, the system is pretty much uh, put back together functionally. I could turn it back on and use it. Now we just have the problem of getting this side panel on. So basically I just gotta place it over the top, look through these holes at the heat sink down below there and mark out where to cut. All right, the 
area to be cut has been marked off, has been taped off. I have supreme confidence in what I'm doing. Let's move this show outside. I made some progress with my rotary tool already, but uh, in the interest of efficiency, I'm gonna see what my angle grinder can do with this. <laughs> angle grinder. It's a little bit faster. All right, so my initial mod is, uh, I don't wanna say complete, cause that's just jinxing myself, but at least I managed to cut the hole out. And I will say, this thing is not as flimsy as I was expecting it to be after doing that. So that is a good thing. I am not quite ready to take the tape off. I'm gonna see if I can do a test fit here first. Really? Holy crap, it fits. Like, again, I just, I don't want to get ahead of myself because I, I try to prepare for the worst and everything, but the fact that this went on, mounted over the top, there's barely enough clearance for the fins along this edge. I probably went a little wider than was necessary on this side, but I didn't want to conflict with the thermal ends of the heat pipes right there. And again, just barely enough clearance for the heat pipes around that side as well. This makes me happy, so I think I can remove the tape now and apply my U-channel. I have already gone along here uh, once I finished the cuts with the angle grinder, which was so much faster than the typical rotary tool. But I used the rotary tool to go along here and kind of clean and deburr the edges, and then I finished it off with just a little bit of hand filing as well. All right, so I couldn't find a really like finished solution for these outside corners. You can sort of angle this around corners, but like hard 90 degree angles like this is a little bit tougher, but honestly, that's fine. I'm really not going for aesthetics with this build. I mainly wanted it to be protected from the rough metal edges that were there, but I think we're now ready to do the final reassembly. So despite my best efforts, I think I can actually call this a successful video. Uh, I managed to mod the case, I managed to fit the upgraded cooler inside, the hard drive in the, is installed as well. I opted not to go for the CPU upgrade and adding the graphics card because uh, for one, I don't really need the extra CPU horsepower right now, but I might do that in the future since I do have a better cooler on there. I'll make that decision as I potentially add more cameras to the setup because more cameras equals more CPU horsepower needed. What I do have now though is eight times the amount of storage for all of the videos and surveillance footage and of course, a nice quiet system now. And I know this is anecdotal, but the mic is right next to this. And since this is a Noctua NF F12 fan, you just can't hear it at all. What you're probably hearing right now is the fan I have going over there because it's a little warm today. I'm always a little hesitant when I do projects like this because they're not practical. I, hopefully I've mentioned that a few times and it's not something I'd recommend anyone set up for themselves at home. It's just me trying to figure out a good solution to get something done with the hardware and equipment that I have here at home. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy it and I'll post links uh, to the parts that are in this build down in the video description below as well as a link to mnpctech.com. If you guys aren't familiar, Bill Owen owns that site. He has a YouTube channel as well. Does a ton of really, really awesome cases case mods, system mods, custom builds, and he sells a lot of modding accessories and equipment as well. I haven't been in touch with him for several years, but since I started pulling stuff out and I was like, oh yeah, Bill gave me this. He gave me this awesome green scotch tape too. So I just wanted to say another thank you to him because I'm still getting use out of that stuff. Thank you guys again for watching this one though. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out. We'll see you in the next one.